Hey, what's up? Welcome to the channel. This is Living in Alberta. Today, we're going to look at five things you need to know before moving to Red Deer, Alberta 2023 update. Yo, what's happening? My name is Kyle. Welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. On this channel, we break down everything when it comes to moving to or living in Alberta. So if you do want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Definitely click that notification bell so you are notified every single week when a new video comes out. And if you would like any help with the real estate needs, I'm a licensed realtor. You can use this info popping up. Get a hold of me any way you know how. We'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get into it. All right, diving right in, let's get right into it. And I think this first one is gonna surprise a lot of people, but currently there is no longer any nightclubs in Red Deer. Yes, you heard me right. There is zero nightclubs left in Red Deer as of January 21st. The two remaining nightclubs, Bellini's and Long Riders, Long Riders is a shitty name by the way, it's Billy Bob's. Those two nightclubs closed their doors permanently. The store is closed forever. So where can we get a drink? Look the other way, I guess. And man, this is a sad day for me. I worked in Mort's, formerly known as Bellini's, or is known as Bellini's for a long, long time. And I'm not sure what is going on, why they're closing. I feel like this is such a college town that we need a lot of bars for the college kids and the young people. I know when I first moved here in 1998, Red Deer was a happening city for parties anyways. There was about seven nightclubs. I had buddies who lived in Edmonton and Calgary and they would always come to Red Deer because everyone wanted to party here. And now we are down to zero nightclubs. No more clubs. What? Yes, your life is retail. Now these bars, they've been around for 40 years. And over the years, I, like I mentioned, when I first moved here, I had about six or seven nightclubs. You slowly saw one by one by one, they started to close. And then eventually we were ended, we only had Bellini's and Billy Bob's left. Obviously, I think COVID had a major effect on some of these clubs. A lot of them just couldn't make it through those tough times. They were shut down all the time. But the hotel where the nightclubs are located is now owned. It changed ownership a lot of times over the years. It's owned by the Ochis Hospitality Partnership and they have decided to close the bars down. They are actually moving the casino from downtown Red Deer up into the hotel into the exhibition center. So the reason I bring this up is that, you know, if nightlife is a big thing for you, you might be really disappointed when you get to Red Deer. Technically, we do have the VAT still, which is, I guess, technically a nightclub. But in my opinion, it's more of a loungy style. It's got some open mic. It's a really cool place. I love the VAT, but it's not a really a true nightclub, so to speak. Where's this club? Sorry, lady, this is a private club. So again, sad times in Red Deer. Uh, I'm not sure what all the younger crowd, the younger generation, the college kids are gonna do. Maybe this could be a good opportunity for someone to come in and open something up. But for the time being, we do not have any nightclubs in Red Deer. All right, let's move right along to number two. And in my opinion, this is a super interesting stat about Red Deer. Over the last few years, obviously there's been a lot of stuff going on in the world but Red Deer has emerged as the number one most affordable market in the country. So if we look at the average price of a detached home in Red Deer, and we'll use 2022 numbers because we're only a month into 2023, so it's not relevant, but the average price of a detached home through 2022 was about $370,000 in Red Deer, which is super, super affordable. Now there are places in Canada that do have more affordable real estate prices, but when you look at the ability to earn a high income, plus the real estate prices, this is where Red Deer really started to shine. So on average, people in Red Deer, citizens of Red Deer earn about $77,000 per year. The amount of that yearly income that they spend on keeping a roof over their head is just over 25%, which put Red Deer in the number one spot. This is like the only place we could afford. We are definitely buying this house. So this is a really cool stat about Red Deer in my opinion. When you have more disposable income because you're spending less on your mortgage, you can do more things with your money, whether it's where you wanna travel, you wanna invest in the stock market, you wanna buy or invest in real estate properties. There's just so much more you can do when you're not spending an exorbitant amount of money trying to keep a roof over your head. And if we look at the other beneficial costs of living in Red Deer, obviously it's gonna be a little bit more affordable than the bigger cities. Rent prices are going to be cheaper in Red Deer. 
And what people don't really consider is that you're gonna be spending less time commuting because Red Deer is a smaller city. It's super easy to get around in. You're gonna be spending less money on gas. So lots of really cool things when it comes to cost of living and the affordability of real estate in Alberta, or in Red Deer, sorry. But as of right now, Red Deer is the most affordable market in the country when you look at the price of real estate as well as the income that people earn. Let's live here. <laughs> All right, let's move right along to number three. And this is one of my favorite things about living in Red Deer, Alberta. And that's that it has just a big town feel to it. Even though it is a mid-sized city, it doesn't feel like a city. So I have a lot of people reaching out to me every single week, asking me about Red Deer, Alberta, asking me about what it's like to live there. A lot of times they tell me that they don't want to live in the city because they've been living in a busy area their entire life. Red Deer doesn't have a busy feel to it, guys. It really just has that big town feel. I've said this many times that I feel like Red Deer is just my small town, which was White Court, where it had about 10,000 people, ate a bunch of steroids, and now you have Red Deer. Everyone kind of knows each other. It's super easy to get around in. There are no traffic issues in Red Deer. There's no rush hour. There's no issues finding parking. You can be from one end of the city to the other end of the city in a maximum of 20 minutes. That was a quick trip. Yes. So in my opinion, this makes it really easy when trying to figure out where you want to live based on your commute to work. No matter where you're living in the city, you're never gonna be far away from work. And a lot of people tell me that I need to be close to the highway because I need to commute for work down the highway too. You're never more than 10, 15 minutes away from highway two, no matter where you live. So it doesn't matter if you're living on the far east side of the city, highway two is on the west side of the city. It makes it, it just expands your options when you're looking for neighborhoods to live in Red Deer. Now I will say it does become important when you are deciding where you wanna live based on where you want your child to go to school. So depending on what neighborhood you choose, there will be a certain school designated to that area and that's where your child will have to go to school. And also you're gonna to wanna to consider that if your child isn't taking the bus and you are driving them, so you're driving them to school in the morning, you're driving them to school, after school, driving them home after school, I should say. What would you say? It's not worth repeating. Now, some other things to consider, you know, maybe you really, really don't wanna live within the city. You've just had enough of city living and you wanna live just outside. There's a lot of great options that are super close to Red Deer. Black Falls is only 10 minutes away out of the north side. Lacombe is about 25 minutes away. Sylvan Lake, 15 minutes out of the west side. There's a lot of options if you really don't want to live in the city and that's a deal breaker for you, but you want to be close enough that you have access to all the shopping and healthcare and all those different kinds of things. So again, I'm beating the dead horse here, but no traffic issues, no rush hour, easy to get around in, super easy to get around in. And really, one of my favorite things about living in Red Deer is that it really feels like a big town. This place is amazing all right moving along to number four and this is something that i love about red deer if you love being active red deer is set up very well to live an active lifestyle and yes that even means in the winter time i know people they have nightmares about alberta winters again it's a hit miss thing this year's actually been super super nice i went to mexico at the beginning of january and it was like zero and plus five while I was gone. So it wasn't even worth it to go, honestly. But there's lots of fun activities that you can do in Red Deer in the wintertime. And one of my favorite things to do is go to Canyon Ski Hill, which is only about an eight minute drive out of the east side of Red Deer. This is a phenomenal little ski hill. There is tons of things there that you're going to love. It is the largest non-mountain ski resort in Alberta. And we recently hosted the 2019, I guess not recently, that's a few years ago, Canada Winter Games, and they put a ton of money into the ski hill. So it really is an awesome little ski hill that you wouldn't expect to be in central Alberta. They have 23 runs, six lifts, and one of the things that I love the most about the ski hill is that they have this, I don't know what you call it, tube run or tubing area. My kids love going there. Also, they upgraded the cross-country ski trails at the Riverbend Recreation Center. So if you're into cross-country skiing and skiing, there is a ton of fabulous options here in Red Deer. Now, yes, I know we're only two and a half hours away from the mountains, but maybe you don't want to make that trip. Maybe you just want to go a few minutes, you know, just out outside of town. We have some really great options here in Red Deer. Which brings me to my next point about the active lifestyle. And we've talked about this so many times before, but we have 
a ton of parks and walking trails and a beautiful river valley here in Red Deer. So many people think that Red Deer is just, just this blue collar prairie city that you drive by on your way from Edmonton to Calgary and there's not much to it. It's what everybody thinks. But honestly, those people haven't spent enough time in the city because the parks and walking trails here, they are absolutely beautiful. Some of the more popular parks are Heritage Ranch, Bower Ponds, and we'll throw up some b-roll so you can see exactly, you know, some footage of the parks. And we have some amazing dog parks. Three Mile Bend is one of the nicest dog parks that you're going to see anywhere in the country. It's been ranked as one of the nicest dog parks in Canada. I had, well, I had three dogs. I had to put my oldest guy down, which broke my heart but we would spend a ton of time there when we lived in the city. It is an amazing dog park. And Oxbow's Off-Leash Dog Park, it's a phenomenal dog park as well, which is on the south end of the city. And let's touch on one last thing, circling back to winter time. People always ask me about Chinooks in Red Deer. Now, do we get a lot of them? Absolutely not. It's not something that I think that you're gonna notice living here. I can't even remember the last time that we actually got a Chinook. And for those of you that don't know what a Chinook is, it's a warm wind that comes in off of the mountains. You're going to get that kind of stuff near Calgary. You're not going to get that kind of stuff in Red Deer. So I know a lot of people move here and they're expecting, you know, these warm winds to come in and break up the winter for you. That kind of stuff happens around Calgary much more frequently. They get a lot of Chinooks in Calgary, but in the Red Deer area, unfortunately, I have to tell you that we hardly get any Chinooks in this area. All right, let's talk about number five, the last one on the list. And I saved this one till last because I know a lot of people are probably going to get all their feathers ruffled and and throw some comments in there. But hey, I wanna hear your comments and what you think about this. But there's been a lot of talk about a high-speed rail being built from Edmonton to Calgary for a long time now. Now there's two companies looking to do this. Recently, one of the companies called Transpod has secured half a billion dollars in initial funding in early 2022. So, you know, this might've been a pipe dream for a long time, but in my opinion, and we'll reference this video, you know, in years, years to come, but I think that you will see this high-speed rail developed from Edmonton to Calgary. And why do I think that this is important? Now, initially they weren't going to stop in Red Deer, which in my opinion was one of the dumbest things that I've ever heard of. Why would you not stop in the third largest city in Alberta when you're going right by it? I mean, obviously there's a cost to it. It adds an extra billion dollars to the project, but they are now stopping in Red Deer. So that is going to be a massive, massive boost for the economy of Red Deer for real estate prices. And I think you will see if this does go through a lot of people moving out of the bigger city because the real estate is so much and the cost of living is so much more affordable in smaller cities like Red Deer. Now the idea is, is that you're supposed to be able to go from Edmonton to Calgary in about 45 minutes. So you can imagine what Red Deer to Calgary or Red Deer to Edmonton is going to be. But it seems like this is becoming more and more of a reality. With Transport actually securing half a billion dollars in initial funding, I think it makes it look a lot more promising. And I think obviously when this does go through, if this does go through, you're going to see Red Deer explode. Now again, will this happen or will it not happen? Uh, we'll wait and see, but if it does happen, I'm going to bring you all back to this video and say, I told you so. But I'd love to hear guys' comments on what you think about this high-speed rail from Edmonton to Calgary. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. If you did like the video, hit that like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and definitely click that notification bell so you are notified every single week when a new video comes out. And if you would like any help with the real estate needs, use the simple popping up. Get a hold of me any way you know how. would love to hear from you. All right, I will see you guys next week. Cheers.